Okay, well, we're a few days uh, post-race in Indian Wells now. Um, are you a bit cold? All right, so normally I would give you a very long and boring, dreadful post-race interview. But today I'm going to do it a little bit differently for reasons that will become apparent and give you a relatively short and still boring post-race interview. Um, so, I'm uh, dreading this pretty, pretty badly. I'm not going to lie. I just want to uh, point out that this pool is 57 degrees. Tootie, it's okay, buddy. That's how I feel right now, too. Um, so if you've been following along, you will have probably saw that I have developed a bit of a phobia. I've actually always had a phobia of cold water, but it's been getting uh, worse after, I think, I believe, it began growing in my mind in the ice chest challenge in Kona with the Liedos and with Colin. And so anyways, um, coming into Indian Wells, I was very aware that the water was going to be very cold. And so I thought, okay, I better do my due diligence and I better uh, prepare myself mentally for this and physically, really, because there is a physical response to it. Um, because I actually have had a panic attack in uh, Indian Wells once before. And so I came out here in my normal wetsuit and I put my feet in the water and I immediately turned back around and I went inside and I, I said, there's absolutely no way I can do this. Um, and so I got my, my thermal wetsuit, thicker, uh, a bit more restrictive, some, some like different fibers on the inside, and my thermal cap. And then I came out and I lasted for two minutes in here with all of those things on. Um, and then, uh, this is now like about a week ago, um, then eventually I was able to the next day stay in for five minutes with it on. And I felt like I had somewhat made gains in that department. So anyways, I made that decision to wear uh, a thermal suit knowing I had, I had done some testing with the suit, but uh, knowing that, you know, I would be sacrificing some speed for uh, being warmer. And right off the bat, I must say, making decisions based on fear and phobias is, is probably a mistake in, in most instances. Um, so anyways, um, I go to the race. Um, I... I get, I'm doing everything to the best of my ability. I get into the water about 10 minutes before. That's how long they allowed us to do an acclimation. And uh, it seemed like everything was going good. I, I seemed like I had undergone the physiological process that, that happens when you get into cold water. And uh, I lined up and one of the things I've really been working on my swim, I've been working really hard on my swimming and I'm actually one of the other fears I have is taking it out hard. and. Um, because I have had instances where I've blown up before and so I've been really working on getting over that phobia but perhaps it was not the right time to start that uh, in a race because the gun went and I went out gung-ho and I believe the combination of wearing a thicker tighter more restrictive suit the thermal cap with the chin strap um, the cold water, it was 57 degrees like this water in this pool, and the uh, taking it out really hard, I believe it was a battle that I was going to lose from the beginning with my mindset, my fear, my phobia, and then um, about maybe 150 meters in, I felt like I couldn't breathe, and I felt that there was no option other than to stop, and my first reaction was to rip off the thermal cap because I was felt that I was was uh, suffocating and then it took me a while to get my bearings eventually I got my bearings and I started swimming again and I knew then when I got well first off then my head had to undergo the um, 
acclimation process because it had not really touched the water yet and I have pretty short hair and um yeah go ahead. <laughs> you could laugh <laughs> it's okay um anyways when I was swimming I, I realized that uh giving up that performance going from a you know a, a pretty pretty loose I'd done all this mobility work uh literally half hour to 40 minutes a day of mobility work I'm acutely aware of changes in mobility now and so I knew that my mobility was quite restricted and then I even though I had lost some time um, I knew even once I got my bearings though I was still quite discombobulated I knew that I had made a poor decision but it was the best decision I could make uh, operating from a place of fear and phobia and so anyways I swam to the best of my ability uh, until the finish and then I got out of the water. I knew my race was over the moment I was treading water in a professional race against um, Sam Long and Jack Laundrie and various other top tier talent. Um, I, knew, I knew that you, you're not going to be able to overcome a massive swim deficit to guys who you know normally you would swim with. And so it became more of a uh, race against myself. I mean, it's always a race against yourself, as I said, but this one truly became a race against myself. And so um, out onto the bike, I, I actually raced this one blind. I just uh, went by feel. And, uh, you know, I, I actually rode really, really well, all things considered. I, I also, from a suggestion, put on Aquaphor and on my face and my hands and my feet. And um, I don't know if it did something to my pores or something, but it, my hands were incredibly painful and um, I just couldn't grab my bottle. So I couldn't literally grasp it to get it out. And so I got behind on the nutrition. That's not relevant because I was never going to be a factor anyway, but it was an observation. I don't think I would do that again. Uh, use that stuff. It, I'm not sure if that was that or just the cold water and cold temperatures in general. Um, but I actually ne like negative splitted the bike on, off of feel and I averaged 321 watts. In the final 40 minutes, I averaged 326. So it wasn't a great bike performance, but I knew that if I was going to do my very best in the race, I also was going to have to run well. And so I figured that a conservative approach on the bike would be um, probably the best bet, the best method. I was pretty uh, weak uh, still on the corner, so it's an area definitely to improve upon. I was still quite timid, um, but it's a work in progress. And then um, I did eventually, by the end, catch up to Bart Arnott's, and uh, I knew that that was going to be a fun battle. He's a very good bike runner, and um, it was fun to battle with him. I, I felt quite weak on the first hill into the golf course. I, I could tell that I didn't have great power on the run because normally I feel very strong on hills, and I felt actually quite weak, which is for me, I feel that I'm a very good hill runner, and to feel that, I knew that that's not a great sign. And so, um, he, <clears throat> we ran together maybe the first five miles, and then he gapped me. And I usually start to come back into myself when someone gaps me, and this is what happened. I was able to focus on myself better, and. Um, actually stopped the hemorrhaging and then eventually actually started to catch a bit of a second wind I would say around mile eight and I actually caught back up to him at about mile nine and then I started to think maybe I would be able to take him but I had forgotten by this point about the experience going up the hill <laughs> um, that I didn't have great power and so I knew it was coming at a mile 12 we were running side by side do you want to finish out here no okay I do want to finish in here okay and then I don't know it's maybe mile 12.6 and um, then he went and I knew it was coming and I tried to go with, and I wore a stride pod actually for this race. Once again, I ran blind, by the way. I, I didn't, didn't look, I ran the whole thing by feel. And so that 
10 seconds where I went with them, I was averaging 240 per kilometer pace. So I can't really get upset with myself because you know, it wasn't a horrible go, but I was not able to respond. And he got me pretty well immediately. And that was the end. Um, that was that that got me to the finish line. And so, yeah, it was it was um, it was a bit disappointing because my my swimming was um, I've been swimming quite good, and I was excited to show that. But I think the moral of the story here, and, and my bike and my run were, I'm I'm actually quite happy with considering, you know, I took my season break and I trained extremely low volume going in. I, I considering this to be the first race of the season. Um, so I, I did transcend the training, which was what I uh, intended to do. I, I do believe it was a transcendent experience with regards to the training that I did. But the swim was quite disappointing because I feel like I, well, I know I could swim better than that with certainty. Um, and so the moral of the story here is that, what's the moral of the story? I can't remember. Don't no. give in to fear. Oh yeah. <laughs> the moral of the story is that, and coach Justin had um, stated this, but it was, it was too late already. I told him, coach, I've been swimming. I actually told coach, coach, I think this, this race is actually going to be more of a test of my survival skills than it is of my swimming. I don't know why I talk, because everything I f and say usually comes to fruition, like, like, like I just created, almost. But anyways, I said to him, I had been training in the thermal suit in the pool to try and get used to it, and he said, what are you going in there in the thermal suit for? Why aren't you going in there without a wetsuit on? So that, <laughs> then when you get in the race with a wetsuit on, you'll be like, this is amazing, this is so wonderful. But. Instead, I gave in to phobia and fear. And instead of thinking critically about that behavior and just damn well getting in here like I am right now, instead I gave in to fear and I listened to fear. And so if you think you're good in the cold, you probably are. And if you think you're bad in the cold, you probably are. It's all in the mind. So... There are no bad experiences. It turns out that this race was a wonderful experience because, well, here I am. I don't know how long I've been in here for. <laughs> Quite frankly, I could start swim like I could do the swim, like one session. It's because I've con I, I, in my mind, I, I'm, not, I'm just saying, I'll just do it, just do it. Why, you, like, like, what are you worried about? What's gonna happen to you, you gonna get cold? I don't know why I didn't do this beforehand. I don't know why I didn't do this beforehand. But now I actually find this quite invigorating and I'm going to get a cold tub, I think, and and really practice this. It seems like a really, really uh, positively stimulating mental, physical challenge. So anyways. No fucking limits. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs>